Hey everyone, it's Jen from Vine Styles. I hope you're doing well, and today we're going to be tasting a Beaujolais Cru. So what's in my hand and what will be in my glass shortly is the Robert Perrault um, Beaujolais Cru. It is a 2018 Cru from Broly, so I'm super excited. It has like a little throwback with the name to the soil type and oh, okay, let's just get into it. So where are we? We are going to be in Beaujolais, France, which is going to be south of Burgundy, uh, with Macon kind of being at the bottom there, and then it starts with Beaujolais, and then Beaujolais runs down almost into the Rhone Valley. There are 13 AOCs here, with 10 of them as uh, Beaujolais Cru AOCs. Broly, which is where this wine comes from, is actually uh, the most southern um, appellation and it is also the largest. So super cool. In Beaujolais, 98% uh, of the plantings here are Gamay. And Gamay is a crossing of Pinot Noir and Gouy Blanc. The climate here is continental with some Mediterranean influences. It tends to be warmer and drier than northern uh, Burgundy. The cooperation is called Terroirs Originels. It brings together uh, 30 artisan vintners and they work their land independently, but they all share the same sort of passion and integrity to bring out the best expression of their wines. So not only is Rubber Perud a founding member of this cooperation, but he's also the current president from my understanding. He was born and raised in Beaujolais with his brother Mikel Perrault, and they ended up investing in, into their heritage by buying four acres of land in Broly. The vineyard Amasis is actually located on the southern slopes of the Soburn Hill, which is actually located in the town of Quincy. The soil here consists of red granite with a layer of quartz and another layer of amethyst just underground. This is what gives the wine its unique taste. Gamay tends to be a little bit more uh, terroir driven, uh, especially in quality, uh, which is soil dependent. The vines here tend to be 75 years old and fermentation actually begins with um, native yeast. So why is it that during harvest, they have to carefully hand harvest these grapes? and they have to carefully and gently put them into these small batches, these small baskets, and why do they have to make sure that the berries get back to the winery intact? Because they're going to use carbonic maceration. What is carbonic maceration? Well, it is a intercellular fermentation, basically. So what happens is the grape gets back to the winery intact. Fermentation starts to take place in the berry, itself, it tends to give a little bit more of a fruity, kirschy, almost bubblegummy sort of flavor to it. Berries start to break down and they start to crush themselves. So because of the carbonic maceration technique, maceration tends to last about 15 days um, with whole clusters in concrete vats and they try to use very low sulfites. The wine is then aged in large neutral oak barrels from Ozi Dress uh, for about one year on fine lees. All right, enough gib gab. Are we ready to taste the wine? Clear pale ruby on here. I hope you can see that. The aromas are clean with medium plus intensity. I get crushed, ripe raspberries on there. And then almost kind of like a candied strawberry note. And then more into the blackberry, but like a mature ripe blackberry and a mature blueberry, um, just sprinkled with some confectioner sugar. I really like it. It is so nicely done. There's not just fruit on here. There is a little bit more. I'm getting more vanilla. Um, and a little bit of uh, sweet baking spices as well. But then just right in the back, you're starting to get a little bit more savory, a little bit more toasty notes. A touch of that smokiness is starting to come through. It's kind of like a smoked meat. 
on top you get lots of lots of blueberries and raspberries and strawberries, just fruit, fruit, and very just sweet, mature fruit on there. And then as it goes on, it gets a little bit more savory, a little bit more complex in there. It's really, really pretty. It's really, uh, I, I'm excited. Let's taste. So I find this wine to be very soft. It feels just soft and pleasant and just very easy drinking. And I'm getting those flavors again of the mature raspberry, but we get into a little bit straight into the darker fruit on there as well. So blackberry, blueberry again, or that smoked meat uh, note as well, just as I breathe out. And there's that nice vanilla that visits again. It's just like a wave of flavors that just kind of keep coming back. Okay, finally, food. I would go anything from roasted, braised, or smoked red meats. We could do venison, we could do duck, uh, which is a little bit darker poultry meat, but we could get into more of that poultry style because it is a little bit lighter. Go into the red category, but it can also go into the white category, so poultry, pork, that sort of uh, thing. We could go into cured meats and cheeses for that charcuterie board, right? As we're talking about that savory note. Another thing I would try with this would be dark chocolate and raspberries because there's a ton of raspberries on there and it also has a, like that vanilla and Hershey-ness to it. I think it will be delicious. Even do something like onion base, so a French onion soup. Get that cheese on there, get that savory onion on there. So I hope you enjoy this tasting and I hope to see you again in the next video and in store. Come visit me in store. Okay. Bye guys. Enjoy.